Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. To new subscribers, you are welcome to go through the playlists of the Master's Voice. The playlists are where the different themes on this channel have been arranged in topics. So there's a supernatural channel. I mean, there's a supernatural playlist that's in two parts. One is about fallen angels and giants, and the other one is about different types of Nephilim, including the creatures that call themselves alien, these demonic beings that are called alien. There is that. There's the Russia and the China playlist, which is the most important playlist on the master's voice. There is the medical playlist, but it is no longer hosted here on YouTube because of the extreme censorship that this channel began to experience in 2022, around the end of 2022. But because of God's mercy, the medical playlist was hosted here from 2020 all the way until I think November, 2022. And it is now only found on alternate channels such as BitChute, Shoot, Rumble, and Brighteon. If you look in the description box below every video, please make this a habit. You will find all the information that is relevant to this channel. So I have two words from the Lord today. One is an old word that has been on the blog for quite some time. Um, but there is a multifaceted word, prophetic insight teaching from the Lord today. And it con it concerns quite a lot of things. And so by the time I put this video up, I would have given it a channel, but I would have given it, sorry, I would have given it a title. But for now, it does not have a title. It only has a date. These words have come from the Lord today, April the 27th, 2023. And the first thing that the Lord is speaking about is the confirmation of the prophecies that came as far back in 2019 concerning the Aurora Borealis. So I was speaking about the Aurora Borealis as far back as 2019 because the Lord drew my attention to it one day. Just a moment, please, because of the noise. By using the words strange fire, he used the words strange fire, fire in the sky. And so it, it was a bright day at that time. It was about one o'clock in the afternoon. And I looked up at the sky and I was wondering, what does the Lord mean by fire in the sky? I said, Lord, are you talking about the fact that there will be bombs here one day in America? And the Lord was saying, no, he is talking about the coming of a time that he had spoken to me about years prior. This is 2015 and 2016, where the Lord began to say that in the last days, as you go closer to the final times, you will begin to see the sky being my timepiece. The sky is going to be like a clock celestial. And what God was saying is that there would start to come very vivid sunsets of unusual colors, very unusual colors such as purples, greens, and gold, and the sky being a very bloody type of red at times. And he would say in those days, when you see that, you know that you are getting closer to the time of the arrival of the fallen ones. When you see that, take heed to yourself. This is the phrase he would always use because the devil has come down to you. The devil has come down to you. And if you read Revelation chapter 12, you will see that there is yet to come a final battle that will take place in the heavens. So this is a spiritual battle. It will not take place here on earth. It will not take place before the eyes of men. It will be a spiritual battle in which God gives a command to Michael and his angels to perpetually clear the upper realm, the heavenly realm of the presence of Satan forever. Satan is sitting in the second heavens. He can come down to earth and roam about however he likes, like we see in the book of Job. But Satan has an entire fiefdom, if you will, in the second heavens. A command will go out and Satan will be cleared out from that space forevermore. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 that Michael and his angels fought and the devil and his angels also fought but there was found for them no place in heaven anymore. And when they fell, a loud voice was heard, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the devil has come down to you. He will be cast down here to us, flat-footed. I've been speaking about this for many years. And so God says that the increase of color in the sky where the sun is no longer setting, where you can just get 
you know, a little red and a little orange. Now you're going to be getting these blazing magenta, which is pinkish purple skies. And so I will just read a little bit. And here is the picture from the old prophecy. If you can see what that sky looks like, then you know that that is not a common type of sky for a sunset. And this prophecy is from June the 30th, 2019, and it is called Desolations Are Determined Part 6. This was an eight or nine part prophecy series from the Lord. And this one is entitled Strong, um, Strange Fire. And the banner scripture is Matthew 24 and 30. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And so the Lord was saying that the kind of fire he was talking about back then in June of 2019 is strange fire and profane fire. Profane means cursed. Profane actually means unclean and rejected. Um, and so he was saying that the skies and the clouds will be painted a strong wine color a strange, strong red color like wine. And there will be other colors too, like gold and purples and blues. And when you see these colors appearing on the skies, then look to yourselves because the devil is about to come down to you and live with the sons of men. Strange beings, projected, profane and rejected sons, having the appearance of a man, but they are not unclean ones that have been forever put out of the presence of God. This is referring to when they will finally be cast down from that upper place and will no longer be able to move about in that upper realm. They will literally have no choice but to come down here, presenting themselves as travelers from very far away, which is the top storyline of aliens, and say, we have come to bring you advancements, technology, blessing, medical healing, and they will come and live here. And God says that's because they have been forever put out of his presence, now coming down in appearance as angels of light to deceive mankind and take a terrible toll of vengeance on them. Satan, having hated man since his creation, rages against my love for my creation. And he has now come to creep after them and steal their robe of favor from them and leave them as stripped as Joseph. And at the time I made this prophecy, I was sharing the warnings of the Lord, that the Lord says that don't follow the ways of the world. So the ways of the world is a phenomenon will come, a phenomenon will happen, and then people will be greatly enraptured of it. They will love it, they will flock to see it, and things like that. And yet if you look in Matthew 24, Matthew 24 has such wise warnings such as, when they say to you that Jesus has appeared in the desert, which is a theme that we will actually touch on in this prophecy. When they say, come, he is in the desert, do not go. And when they say, lo, he is in the house, do not go. So when they come and tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ himself has appeared in some wilderness place, or has appeared in some deserted place, do not follow people there to look. It is a trap. It is a lie because the appearance of the son of man, when he comes, the Bible has clearly said, I just read it to you in Matthew 24 and 30. Every eye will see Jesus when he returns. So when they say he is in this inner room, meaning that he has come like you see is happening in Israel now with them saying, oh, Messiah is already here and they're carrying this person who's covered up with some kind of cloth or whatever. It is a whole lie because when Jesus comes, all earth, even the earth that is yearning for the coming of her Lord will know. And so the Lord is saying that when these phenomena start happening and people start going on Aurora Borealis viewing parties and sky viewing parties, that wise people are not to partake in these things. He says that with the frequency of these skies, these very colorful skies, and with the way that we can now see, this is nearly four years after I spoke about Aurora and things like that. You can now see that the Aurora is appearing in such a way that 30 U.S. states 
can see it at the same time as happened recently. So maybe it was just a little band here and a few states there, but now they're saying things like, oh, 30 states can be able to see this thing at the same time. This is not a good sign. I may not know the science behind the appearance of the aurora, but I know that God says when we start to see natural phenomena out of its time and place, when we start to see massive fish very far inland on land, we should know that that is not normal. When we start to see the aurora appearing out of its time and place, appearing far away from where it's supposed to be, we should know that things are out of natural alignment and we are going into a very different type of season. And so the Lord says that we can use the sky as a timepiece and the aurora borealis itself is going to be something like a clock marking our journey to the day of the Lord and the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord says that we are shifting into a season that is infinitely more spiritual than any that we have ever experienced. He says that there will be more of his power available, but there will be more of the devil's power available. And I have shared many dreams on this subject, such as the fact that I say that I dreamt maybe 2019, but I'm not sure because I have had hundreds of dreams over the years, but I dreamt that there came a time into earth where there was wickedness coming down from the sky. There was wickedness coming down from the sky, something like evil entering the world. And it caused people to grow like trees. People grew in response to the increase of demonic power. So they didn't grow physically, but in the dream, God was depicting them like exactly what he says, because it is a more spiritual season. It means that we will start to see more supernatural phenomena taking place. We will start to see more things that make us go, did I really see that? Things that are unexplainable, things that are paranormal, if you want to call it that, things that are not a part of the normal ebb and flow of human life. We will start to see that because the seasons are shifting, please listen, to where spirit is more important than natural. And the reason that this is important for us to understand is because where we are going, it will be very difficult for natural-based people to manage there. A natural-based person is the kind of person who wakes up, has their oatmeal, gets dressed for work, and goes to work, does their work, comes home, maybe picks up something to eat, and then comes home and deals with the family, or if you're single, you just deal with whatever single people deal with, and then you go to bed, and that's all you focus on. You focus on your career. You focus on making money. You focus on getting promoted. You focus on your family, and you just focus on your well-being. It is going to be very hard for people who live like this to live in a place where the spiritual is going to overtake the natural and you are going to have to rely more and more on the power of God or the power of Satan to be able to transact in that coming economy. I'm not speaking economy money. I'm speaking economy worldview, economy environmental shift, economy life. In a spiritual season, things like demons being able to get into your house will happen like that. In the teaching that the Lord gave me that is called who owns the house or the owner of the house, God was speaking of a time where people who just wake up in the morning and do what they do and go to bed and don't know him and don't pray, their homes are going to be like a house that a wrecking ball has hit on both sides. So you've got a huge hole on the east side of the house, west side of the house, 10 massive holes in the roof and a roaring gaping hole in the foundation. And the demons walking by are just going to be like, look at that. And they will just jump into that house. What is the evidence of demons in the midst of a home? The husband and the wife begin to fight hate each other. Adultery will come in. The children will be rebellious. The kids start failing at school. Things start going wrong. Everything in the house, excuse me, please, will start breaking down. Financial costs will go up. Holes will develop in both the husband and the one working son and the mom's pocket. You'll make the money, but it will be like you're putting it into a bag of holes. When spiritual things are not properly managed by spiritual people, 
And all you have is a natural response to a different type of economy. That means that those without God are going to start to excessively struggle because they don't have the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. They do not have the counsel and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. They do not have the strategy of the Holy Spirit to be able to transact in a life where it is less and less possible to rely on your natural mind, your education, or what the TV is telling you to do, and you will need spiritual guidance from God. On the flip side, God is saying, because God is not asleep, even though most of his church is not aware of how to transact in the spiritual realm, and they live in this world where Jesus loves me and he'll take care. You don't actually see that kind of theology in the Bible. You see God giving advice to human beings and the human beings following the advice and the strategy of God in order to be able to deal with certain situations and get by. Lackadaisical faith, where you just sit back and just say, oh, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Is deception. It is deception to think that because you were born again and you're a child of God, God is literally going to descend from the sky and take care of your bills, your family, your children, your failing marriage, or your thriving marriage, or anything. This life we have been given is a farm, a garden. And if farmer person, Christian, doesn't go into that garden and weed it, hoe it, keep the little animals out, erect the scarecrow, pray for rain, then he will not have a harvest at the end of the day. So the season is going to get increasingly more spiritual and more of God's power is going to be available to people who pray, spend time in the word, strengthen their relationship with Jesus Christ, get used to fasting, get used to more meditation time in the word of God, and also keep good personal habits but Satan's power is also going to increase. This means that the witches and the warlocks and the demonic pastors who sacrifice their church members are also going to be living their best life because the power of the mermaids is also in increasing in response to the season. It's increasing in response to the season. It's almost like baking a cake. You put the batter in a cold pan. So the pan is cold and the batter is also cold. But then when you put that cold hand, that cold pan into an oven that is heated up, the action of the heat acts on the pan. So the pan gets hotter. Let's say that the pan is the Christian, the pan gets hotter and then the batter gets hotter and it begins to cook. So as the heat of the spiritual season increases, Christians will be tested, but what is inside Christians is going to come out. So if it's anger inside you, it's going to come out because of the pressure of the season. If it's rage inside you, it's going to come out. If it's a short temper, if it's lust, if it's a problem with pornography, it's going to come out as the heat increases. But then if it's righteousness inside you, if it's singing song to, songs to God, if it's saying that this situation is beyond me, but God, I trust you with everything, that is going to come out. If there's trust in you, it's going to manifest. If there's faith in you, it's going to manifest. If there's stamina in you, it's going to manifest. Whatever is inside you, witch, warlock, Christian, false prophet, pastor, preacher, this season is going to reveal it. This is the test that I have been talking about for years here. God says 2023 is the year of the test. And my, my, we are already seeing that some people are failing with flying colors. As the spirituality of the season increases, God's power will be more available to the Christian. Satan's power which is also like a pan put into the oven and his witches and warlocks begin to increase in might and power in their ability to take sacrifices to cause loss of life, which will be discussed here, will also increase. So God's power will be available and the enemy will increase in wickedness and whoever sows to whichever side, they're going to get that. The second part of the prophecy is called the days of darkness. And God said, Tell them that the days of darkness will happen. Darkness was part of the plagues of Egypt, and we will see all plagues return before the return of the Lord. And what the Lord was saying here, because I was, I was not asking him about this, for me, when I bring a prophetic word, I remember what the Lord said to me at the beginning. You write the prophecies down, and they have been announced. But when you speak them out into the world, they have been proclaimed. 
That means that they have been set with a royal seal that comes from the mouth of God. And once a proclamation is made, I gave the example years ago, and I said that when a king makes a rule, when he makes a rule, it happens inside the palace, and it happens with just a few of his advisors and his ministers. Somebody writes it down, and then they bring it to him, and he presses his ring on it, and that is the announcement. Only the people in the palace knows about it. So the person who makes the bed in the palace doesn't know about it. The scullery maid doesn't know about it. The queen will know about it because the king is her husband. And the main advisors and the chieftains will know about it. But then this thing does not become active until it has been proclaimed in the kingdom. So what they do is they'll get a couple of horses and they'll get some of the best knights and warriors. And then they will give them copies of the announcement and they will send them to all corners of the empire. And then they will go and they will open it up and say, hear ye, hear ye, the honorable king so-and-so has said that from now on in the kingdom, this and that will happen. That is a proclamation. When the proclamation has been made, it falls upon the ears of the people in that kingdom. They now know what the king has said. So whether they like it, or whether they don't like it, whether they think that the taxes are too much, or whether they think that the new rule is very good and they love the king, the proclamation is the finality of the announcement that was made in private with the king and his ministers. So when King Jesus makes an announcement to me, I come here, I write it on the blog, or I come and I make the video first, and then that is a proclamation. And then the people have heard. And so what the Lord was saying is tell them that the days of darkness will happen. And what is going on, to the best of my understanding, is that people think that because perhaps this prophetic word originated hundreds of years ago with whoever it was in whatever church it was and has been floating around, that it's something of an urban legend or it's something of a myth. But what the Lord showed me in my own prophecies that I have been writing for years is, have you seen Celestial how many times you have actually written that darkness will cover the earth? And I was shocked. There are at least six prophecies where I saw that totality of darkness will come to this earth. As in no sun, no moon, no light, no cigarette lighter, no flashlight, no nothing. The totality of darkness that will come will be so overwhelming that it will cause the human heart to falter. If the human heart enters into that kind of spiritual season without knowledge of the Lord God, the darkness will be thick as in you can almost touch and feel it like velvet. It will also be alive. The darkness itself will be as a living thing, which means that just as a dog can lick you and you can feel the lick, the lick is not the dog, but the lick is the presence that a dog or a cat is nearby. In the same way, the presence of this darkness will have the ability to greatly oppress and terrify the human spirit. This is what the Lord has revealed. It's the kind of darkness that is capable of bringing depression leading to suicide if you are sitting in it for many days with no clue what it is. It is an oppressive spiritual darkness, but that is not all. It is bringing living beings in it. In one of the live prophecy prayer calls from last year towards the ending part of the year, um, I think it's called prepare for war. It's a one hour live prophecy where the Lord just moved from topic to topic to topic. As I was on um, a prayer with other people just began to prophesy on that call many things. And one of the things that I said is I see darkness, a great darkness. So if I'm standing here, it was as if I was looking up towards a corner of the sky, a corner of the world, and a leak appeared in the sky. I have always said here that the sky is not what we think it is, that it is not just this blue thing that is up there, that the sky can open and there is another thing behind it, either like another world or another dimension, let's call it that. I saw that a leak appeared in what we call sky or firmament. A leak appeared in it and darkness began to leak into the world through that thing. 
and it brought creatures with it. They came in through that leak and they were walking around outside. These things that we see on TV, it is predictive programming. Predictive programming is an act of putting stuff that is true, or at least that is known to the internal Satan and his ministers in their little palace. But what they do is they put it out in the mainstream and they tell you it's entertainment and they tell you it's imaginary so that you won't fear it, so that you get used to it. And what I saw is that creatures came into the world and I have been warning here for at least two years that when that darkness come, the, comes, the Lord says to follow the book of Isaiah and shut yourself in your rooms. This means that if you are the kind of person who hears the absolute word of God, that you are not to go outside and you do go outside, you must assume responsibility for the loss of your life and the loss of whoever's life you will lose when you open that door, just as long as it's understood. Darkness was a part of the plagues of Egypt, and I prophesied here in 2022 that the plagues of Egypt will be seen in their totality on earth before the coming of the Lord. We will see all plagues return before the return of the Lord. So I hope that it's understood. All you have to do is go to the book of Exodus and see the plagues, bloody water, which means a difficulty finding fresh water to drink. And I think plague of locusts is one of that. And days of darkness um, in the whole earth is one of that. And another thing that he just brought up briefly is tell them to be mindful of the death of the firstborn. So this is also, excuse the noise, this is also one of one of the things that can be expected before the return of the Lord, the death of firstborn children as a sign of the times and also as a judgment of the Lord. The next thing the Lord mentioned is about the nation of Kenya. And so Kenya has been heavily trending in the news lately because of a tragic accident whereby people in a certain town that is next to a larger town, which I will simply use as a point of reference, the larger town is called Malindi in Kenya. Um, there is a pastor by the name of Paul McKenzie, and I shared on this about a day or two ago because I was extremely stung and I was extremely hurt in my heart to see the fulfillment of one of the prophecies that I brought, I think, in September of 2022, which is that God says that pastors are going to be exposed for ritual murder and human sacrifice around the world. Pastors who sacrifice their members, pastors who are actually not pastors, they are simply hiding under the word pastor because a pastor is one of God's called and chosen fivefold ministry. But there are many men of death who hide behind the name pastor. And God was revealing basically almost a year ago that there are people who sacrifice their members as part of their membership in brotherhoods, such as the Freemasons, such as the Illuminati, um, such as the Rosicrucians and Knights Templar and other things like that. So even pastors in fraternities kill their members like that. So for North America, God was warning that the pastors you love are actually brotherhood members, that they serve in these dark world associations, and that the people who sit in their churches are the dues. The Lord was speaking of pastors who will sacrifice the blood of their members into these covens, into these witchcraft covens, into warlock cults, into the occult, into fetishism, and then the members will die and no one will actually know. They will just think, oh, that was a strange illness that took so-and-so suddenly and things like that. But God was saying that we will see that in the final days, when he is exposing the sins of people, that we will see pastors going to jail for murder. And so back to back, when I shared this information, when I saw it, I shared it as an example of what God was saying, because at the time I shared it, 73 people starved themselves to death at the behest of their pastor. So please understand, they were not on a church fast. They starved themselves. He told them that to live is Christ, but to die is gain. He told them that you can get a head start on spending time with Jesus 
if you die early and you die in this manner by starving yourself to death, then you will achieve and attain Christ faster. Now, at first approach, when you hear this, you will think, well, how could they believe that? But then if you think that, that just goes to show that you don't really have an understanding of how things work in the dark realm. I've spoken about many powers that operate through the power of an evil tongue. I've spoken of the power of suggestion. And I've shared here, speaking to people in the United States of America, the sad fact that God has revealed that the reason many young people in America take their lives is due to the satanic power of suggestion. So someone can irritate you and then you'll just say, go away. And nothing happens if the person, a person can even laugh and say, okay, I'll go away. That's not the power of the evil power of suggestion. The evil power of suggestion is where Satan working through the power of hatred and malice in the heart empowers the words of a person's mouth to have killing power. And I shared here how a young person can be bullied by their peers to take their life. Because of social media, all these children are connected. It's just not a normal connection like, oh, we're all friends on Facebook or we're friends on Snapchat. No, it is actually kind of like coming into covenants, all of them together. They are bonded in ways that they don't understand. And so when one of them is ostracized by the other and they begin to pummel that person and just say, do yourself a favor, kill yourself. Everybody hates you. Why don't you just do everyone a favor and die already? This is the trend here in America and not a single person can deny it because we have all heard of the suicides. We have all heard of the children who have subtracted themselves out of life because of their peers telling them this. Now to a normal thinking person, if someone tells you that, you'll just be like, well, I, I don't care what you say. But the tongue has been dipped in poison and that poison goes to the heart of an undefended soul. That poison even has gone to the heart of adults here in America. And when that poison goes into the heart and you don't have someone trained in understanding spiritual things, who's able to lay hands and ask the Lord to extract that venom, then yes, the poison spreads exactly like the bite of a serpent and goes to the mind. And then the person acts upon the demonic impulse that has hit them like so many darts and they do take their lives. This is what this man did in Kenya. And I was saying it to the people on the community page so that they can have an understanding, not only of the prophecy that God had spoken concerning this, but how it works. Food is essential to the body. The body has its own prompts to let you know that it's hungry. You don't need to ask the body, are you hungry? Because I'm watching out for you. The body will tell you, I am hungry now. Give me something to eat. Therefore, in order to suppress the natural urge for food, there has to be an impulse or a directive, a command and order given that is stronger than the natural need for food. These people were not tied down. In fact, what they had done is to tie down their children in another part of this off, this away from the city, this off campus separated compound so that when their children who were also being forced to offer this sacrifice to meet Jesus early so that when their children would begin to cry out for bread and to cry in hunger, the parents starving in a different location would not be tempted to break the self-imposed fast and go and rescue their children. This is the kind of diabolical wickedness that I have been trying to wake America up to for years, to tell you that the pastors that are teaching you have no clue, literally from A to Z, of what the spiritual realm is like. They have no clue about the onslaught of demonic wickedness, a whole testament of Satan that is coming against the church in the last days. They're busy in their pulpits with their little glass pulpits teaching you about David's brave stand against Goliath that they've been preaching for the last 60 years. They're not telling the church about the power of spells. They're not telling the church about the fact that witches come to these weak, watered-down churches 
and place curses and hexes on the people. And they're sitting there and listening to a weak, watered down gospel that cannot save them because Christ is not in the midst of this. People caught up in dreams of incubus and sycabi. Spirits are touching them. Things are raping them. And they're telling the pastors. And he's like, I think it's in your imagination because he is clueless. He is untaught. He has absolutely no spiritual armor on. So how can he armor you and protect you? Meanwhile, right here, the churches are captured to witches and warlocks. Witches and warlocks stand in the pulpits of the USA. And they are some of the most famous and loved pastors that the Lord has had me call here by name. And when you mention their name, there's a spark in their followers. It's almost like a, a, a lit match, like kindling wood. They go off. Why? Because the spell is bone deep in them. They are like little birds caught in the snare and you can't help them. Because I prayed to the Lord to get an understanding of this. And the Lord said to me, simply go to Matthew 24 and look and read what it says about the false prophets. And what it says about the false prophets and the false Christ is that they will deceive many. When the Bible says will, it means that something absolutely will happen. And this is what is happening here in Kenya. This man spoke under spiritual power of seduction into the souls of hundreds of people. The police are digging up hundreds of bodies in Kenya right now. At the time I posted, the death toll was 73. It has now surpassed 100. And now a second pastor by the name of Ezekiel Odoro, God told me to say his name, Ezekiel Odoro, who styles himself almost like the second Jesus. This man has been pulling crowds of 50,000. Crowds of 50,000. Those are Super Bowl numbers. But in Africa, in one nation, and from surrounding nations, people have been coming to see this self-styled pastor, this self-proclaimed pastor that has now just been arrested for mass killing of his church members. This is where we are. And Pastor Bob and Sister Hendricks is not telling the United States that she is next. Mass killing of church members, isolating people out in the wilderness so that concerned family members, so that concerned friends, please excuse the noise, I'm not going to stop. Concerned family members, concerned friends, Concerned colleagues will not be able to reach the deluded people to ask, is this what Jesus told you? Please show me the Bible verse where he says, starve yourself to death so that you can get a jump start on the rapture in a different format. God gave a word for President William Ruto of Kenya, and he said to tell President William Ruto, you will have a storm on your hands. He said to tell him, you will have more than you can handle because of my judgments coming against Kenya for apostasy and false prophets. The leader of a nation is the steward of that nation. The leader of a nation is supposed to be the person who watches out for everything under his care. But in Kenya, a nation that has always been known to serve God, a nation of worshipers, the rot, the fungus of apostasy has crept in. And I gave the, dis the difference between being a reprobate and being apostate. Reprobate simply means that you are one who is so given over to sin that you are almost unable to be rehabilitated. But an apostate is different. To be called apostate, you must have known Jesus previously. You cannot be accused of apostasy if there has been no revolution of salvation and the entry of the gospel in you. Japan can never be called an, an apostate nation because Japan has never had a revolution of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They have between one to 3% Christians, which is negligible numbers next to nobody, just a few families scattered here and there. Kenya, like America, styles itself as a Christian nation, but God says that he is going to judge Kenya for apostasy and for false prophets. I hope that the nation of the United States is listening because every time I bring the false prophet messages here, people think that God is only mildly irritated, even though I have taught in depth 
about how the entry of false prophets into the water supply of the gospel of Jesus Christ in a nation is literally like pouring sulfuric acid into the place where all the animals come and drink. They will be poisoned and their carcasses will hit the ground. And now here is a live example of the kind of damage that false prophets can do. News reports saying that entire families, an entire family of seven people found in one grave in Kenya. Who do you think put them there? The so-called pastor and his burial henchmen because he didn't dig all those holes alone. He didn't bury all those people alone. He had help. God said that Mr. Ruto is a good man, but he is going to have a storm on his hands and more than he can handle because God says he's going to judge Kenya for falling away from the gospel and for giving her ear to false prophets. Kenya is going to have drought and she is also going to have famine. And I hope we can understand that famine is the natural outflow of a drought. A drought is a curse from God, biblically, when the land sins against God and when the people depart from the true worship of God, he always sends drought as a punishment. Think Elijah and the three years he took rain from Israel until their animals were dying and people were going hungry. That is why King Ahab called him the troubler of Israel. You trouble a land when you mess with the food supply and then people begin to go hungry. Famine is not just we haven't had much crops. Famine is when people begin to starve. God says there won't be food to eat because the people are eating and drinking with false gods and idols. He says, William Ruto is a good man, but he says this man has bitten off more than he can chew. He will be grappling with political instability in his cabinet members. And he will also face public backlash for the string of economic woes that are coming. So Kenya is not only going to experience hunger and drought, but God says that there will also be political instability. And this is a prophecy that has gone out against many nations since 2019. God saying that he will shake many nations and that many leaders will be simply tumbled out of their space of leadership. I brought the prophecy here where I said that God says that some leaders are going to be killed by mass action in their countries and other leaders are literally going to have to get into the presidential car or in an unmarked car and run for the borders or run for the airport to save their lives. Mr. Ruto has bitten off more than he can chew and he will soon be facing political instability among his cabinet members and he will also face public backlash because of the string of economic woes that are coming. This is the entry of the struggles of the, back, the black horse into Kenya. All in all, tell Mr. Ruto that he will be governing a very different Kenya than the one his predecessors left him. So whoever were the previous presidents and whatever kind of season and era they had, if it was a great era or an easier era, God says that Mr. Ruto will be left with a very different Kenya than the Kenya that previous presidents left him. The Lord says, Kenya left me to worship with false gods in the wilderness. That is apostasy. When a nation departs from the ever living God to worship idols, she will become the victim of what those idols can do. And this is what always happened to Israel. The Lord said in, I think it was Jeremiah, he said, ask in this territory and ask in that territory in Jeremiah chapter two, ask if you have ever seen this, can a nation change her gods? So even if you are worshiping Baal, can you stop worshiping Baal and simply say, no, I'm going to go and join the Leviathan cult now. Is it possible for a nation to change her gods? Can you be a God-fearing nation and then you begin to go out into the forest to listen to self-styled prophets who take your life and the life of your children from you. Can a nation change her gods? God says that if you try to change your gods by departing from the cistern of living water, the well of living water to hew yourself a broken cistern that cannot hold water, which is to enter and follow after the false prophets. False prophets are poison. They poison the people who listen to them. 
They poison people who are unwise. That's why I have absolutely no regard for people who will come here to receive pure water and then go and listen to nonsense and then come and ask me, Celestial, what do you think of the nonsense I've been listening to because this person says this and that? False prophets lead you into deception. And when you are deceived, you will find out what the demonic spirits behind the false prophets can actually do to you. And so... Speaking of these two men, Paul McKenzie, Ezekiel Odoro, and many other pastors like them, the Lord says to remind people that exposures of murder, of killing, and of using spells to deceive and destroy people will continue happening. And I even spoke about that in the recent prophecy, Peanut Butter, where I said that I saw on the screen that pastors were being arrested naked for being involved in sex scandals. I saw on, on a television screen in that dream that pastors were being arrested for financial scandals. They were being arrested for murder and accessory to murder. Just a moment, please. I will go back to one of the old prophecies. This message is called the end of the way of the wicked. And here is just a small piece from the part that is called human sacrifices in the church. In my day, the day of my people, this is when God is talking about when he was leading Israel as their God before they said they wanted kings. He said, I told them to prepare me a young lamb or a goat or a clean bull for my offering. I told them to bring me doves and to offer them on my altar as atonement for sin. Bring the sin offering, lay your hand upon it. When you confess upon the lamb that has no spot or blemish, I will be kind to you. I will remove the sin and I would let you go free for the year. However, I now see another sacrifice upon the altars of deep darkness, human sacrifice that takes place daily in the walls of the church. These pastors defile the young children in order to spill the ritual blood of virgins. This happens on every continent where the blind are seeking the blind. So if you ever wonder why grown men keep going after the nine-year-olds here in America and you keep hearing about um, thousands of pages of dockets on pastors. I think it was 700 or 7,000 pastors arrested in, in the Baptist community last year. Men arrested on charges of sexually molesting children. Part of the ritual in the dark world is that virgins are prized. This is from all the way back in history. If you wonder why in the old days they would always seek a virgin and throw her into the sea, it's because the creature in the sea is saying all the blood of the virgin is pure. And so they would say to appease the dragon, we need one virgin or five virgins a year. Well, all that spiritual evil comes from spirits that follow mankind year to year, generation to generation. And so it has passed down into the Western church, into all the churches. They go after young men and women who have never had sexual contact before because that blood is considered very pure. I spoke last year of how a pastor will sleep with a member on a clean white sheet because later that white sheet is being taken down to the beach to be put in the ocean as an offering and the girl is there with the trauma, but does not know that there is a second stage to what is going on. The ritual blood of virgins. Just a moment, please. God says they also will cast spells. And I was sharing with the people on the community page that this is what happened in Kenya. You simply cannot approach a group of people and tell them we're going on a fast. Yes, pastor, how long? Indefinitely. What do you mean, pastor? This is a different fast. You're going to fast until you die. When you die, that is an offering to God. Which God do you think required this fast of these people in Malindi? Which God told the pastors, kill these people and bring me their deaths as an offering? Be very careful when people tell you God. As I said a long time ago, there are many gods requiring many things of the many children who are serving them. By the fruit of the minister, you will know his God. So the Lord also said that they, they require the deaths of virgins and sex with virgins. And he mentioned that many, many pastors are making sacrifice to what he called river gods. And that happens here in the United States as well. 
even though it happens in ways that the people don't recognize. You will always know when sacrifices to the river gods are happening because that church will continuously be hit with what we call here moral failure. For everyone else in the rest of the world, moral failure is simply where the pastor is a known pedophile or he has been having years of sex with every single person in the choir. Sex scandals. That's how you know that marine spirits are active when the pastor is a lustful somebody and the lust that is in him comes on the church. In the prophecy about Bishop T.D. Jakes, the Lord says how damaging and how terrible it is for a house when the pastor has male to male proclivities and then comes and stands on the altar and lifts his hand to share that spirit in him with the rest of the congregation. How can such a congregation keep their clothing on? How can they keep from having slip ups with their boyfriends and slip ups with their girlfriends and lustful thoughts growing up in them, male to male and female to female? The spirit is transferred out of the leader to you. I spoke in an old message and I said that as you continue to sit before false pastors, false prophets, false teachers, the spirit that is on them will come through the screen to you. I said that you will get in full exactly what the people you watch are carrying. You will see the fruit manifesting in your own life as you sit in front of those live streams. You have already been warned, but you continue to go there. And so may it multiply unto you as you desire. For God says that when you go astray from worshiping him to follow idols and idolaters, you will become the victim of exactly what you are looking for. So these are the things he was speaking of. He said the summoning of riverine idols. And from here, we will go into the last part of this prophecy where the Lord again is speaking of Beyonce Knowles Carter. This entire last part of the prophecy is about her. The Lord says that this woman summons riverine idols. Now, I am not exactly up to date on what this woman does, but her marketing is prolific. And so we all here in the United States, we see it. And what you have seen, I think some years ago, is that this woman would go to, I don't know, lakes and rivers and have photo shoots where she's coming out of the lake with hardly anything on and coming out of the river. And one of the gods that she said she's summoning or one of the gods that she appeared to be modeling is this being called Oshun. I think this spirit belongs to the nation of Nigeria. I may not be saying it right. It might be Osun. It might be Oshun. And it's spelled O-S-H-U-N. And this is a river deity. This is a river god. And imagine something like fury, definitely anger or a hot chest impression coming out of the Lord as he expresses anger and displeasure at having this woman modeling to a massive millions strong online community, the worship of river beings, which God hates these creatures, marine creatures, marine spirits, mermaids, and everything attached to them are extremely lustful, territorial, wicked, and pernicious beings. Pernicious beings that when a marine spirit attaches to you, you will have the fight of your life on your hands before you get rid of it. He says that she summons the riverine idols. This means to do with rivers, lakes, streams, and all water bodies. He says this is Beyonce's forte. She is summoning riverine demons over all her followers. And that is why they are so lustful and promiscuous. She also participates in sun goddess worship. And I didn't know what this means. And he went ahead and explained it. Sun goddess worship is where you worship the sun, the moon, the stars, and the hosts of heaven. This is something that Israel has been guilty of for all its existence. God always would tell his people that you are worshiping under every green tree and you are worshiping the trees and you are worshiping the rocks and you are worshiping the stars and the hosts of heaven. The Lord truly, truly hates this practice. The Lord is the creator of all things. Therefore, you, you disdain God so heavily when you transfer the love 
the awe, the reverence, the fear of from him who is alive to these things, which are also alive. I bet you thought I was going to say which are dead. No, the sun is alive. The moon is alive. The stars are alive. And here is what the Lord says. The stars, the sun, the moon, and the hosts of heaven are powers, dignitaries, luminaries, personalities. These are all words that we use for human beings. Just think of ambassadors and people like that. Powers, dignitaries, luminaries, personalities. When you worship them, you are participating in sun worship. And he says you hand over to them your worship. Now, God is saying that Beyonce participates in sun worship. So she's handing over to the luminaries, dignitaries, personalities, and the powers of the hosts of heaven, all who follow her or join in covenant with her. How do you join in covenant with Beyonce Knowles? You're watching her, you're loving her, you're her fan, you're participating in her concerts, you're following her on Twitter and Instagram and all the little following places, you're buying her music, and you have given her a seat in your heart. Promiscuous, he says she is, and that transfers over to you, the follower. He says Beyonce is a sodomite. This is one who has sex in the backside. And this spirit of submitting to have the back door open is now prevalent in the United States among women. And I spoke of this in the very distressing series of prophecies that are called the sodomy ritual, where I said that it was a very difficult period for me last year, June to about September, the things that the Lord was leading me into the understanding of. And one of the things that I found when I was looking into it is that U.S. doctors are actually frustrated and angry with the rise of anal sex in the United States. Because he said, um, not he, but the doctors, the information that I was finding online, is that doctors are complaining at the large number of women that are presenting at U.S. hospitals with complications because of anal sex, which God strongly condemns and hates. And he says, this woman practices it. And since following her means that you are gaining and pulling from her all of the things that she is transmitting to you, the follower. He says that submitting to this ritual to have the back door broken is prevalent in the U.S. among women. It is not a trend. It is a spirit and here are the rest of the things the Lord says. Beyonce is a sorceress. This is one that is higher than a witch. A sorceress is one who has actually progressed through the levels of witchcraft until she is handling very, very mighty forms of power. He said Beyonce is a witch. This means that if she had to come down to the lowest level of the starter ones who are dealing with little crystals and salt, she also knows how to do that. She casts spells. I spoke of the prophecy where I said that I saw this woman at a massive concert and she was singing and in, in, the, in the hype of the moment with her dancers. And I saw golden numbers and golden letters and golden symbols coming out of her mouth in a, in a spiral. And the Lord said to me, look, Celestial, they hear lyrics, but she's actually cursing the people. And this is how she curses the church of Jesus Christ. That means that the church of Jesus Christ is right there with the unsaved people in front of her, listening to her, receiving what comes out of her mouth. And so they also participate in the curses. The Lord says that Beyonce speaks death. The Lord says that Beyonce speaks curses. The Lord says that Beyonce and her husband, Jay-Z, have been present when children are harmed, that children have gone to their death and they have been present. And the last thing the Lord says is that he will strike her down. And I just brought the prophecy, but for a few days ago where I said that I saw a black woman with blonde hair turning in the heavens with her arms outstretched, like a doll turning and she was wearing a black bodysuit with her toes pointed down and no feet. A bodysuit is something like a suit, um, a swimsuit. And she was wearing no pants or anything like that. And she was turning in the heavens 
and then a cord, something like a cord or a rope, but it was not that, was put on one hand and she was yanked very hard and she fell out of the heavens. And also in there, I saw other idols in the heavens, such as Benny Hinn and T.D. Jakes. And the Lord said that it is the time where he has sent forth a word. He has sent forth a command for human beings who have risen above the station that is allowed for human beings. There's no problem with being excellent at your craft. But I always said that when you hear God is judging someone, you should be silent in the presence of the Lord because it means that God has access to information that goes on in the inside of that person and at the back in that person's life that you who see the person in the front don't know anything about. God says that he has now reached the point where he sent out a command in heaven and the angels will now begin to push the luminaries, which means the stars, the high ranking, the up there, the false pastors, the ones who can call 50,000 people to one meeting um, in a stadium, he will begin to push them out of the heavens because no place can be found for them anymore. And God says concerning Beyonce Knowles Carter, this is about the fourth or the fifth time that the Father has given me this word to handle concerning this woman, that she is an idol in the heavens and that she has been judged and she will fall and so here we are. I have covered the words of the Lord, the word for Kenya and the word concerning the days of darkness and the word about the fact that the spiritual season is shifting and the word about the Aurora Borealis and the word concerning President William Ruto of the nation of Kenya and the word concerning Beyonce Knowles Carter and her fall from grace, her judgment by God and I pray that the Lord will minister this word to those who listen. Please have hearing ears. The reason this channel is provided to you is that God is doing a service to his people globally to prepare them for the time of the end. This is not a trending channel. This is not a place for current affairs. This is a place where you come to listen. You listen thoughtfully to the words that the Father is bringing because it is for a season and a period. God is still giving me many scriptures to read in the hearing of the United States. There are many things coming for America, difficult things, and God wants his people not to be deceived and to be prepared. I'm Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. God bless you to each and every person who prays for this ministry, each and every person who uplifts me in your prayers, each and every person who is a blessing to this channel. I appreciate your support in all ways, and I always pray that God will minister it back to you in multiples. Take care, and until I see you again, goodbye.